Welcome to the first video in the stopwatch project. In this video, we will know how we can target elements and use variables. We will build this page and this source code together. And here, as you can see from here, for the div of the class, we got this text. But here, we got a different. The same for the ig query and for the ig. In this video, we will do that with document.quire selector and also with variables. So, let's go to the folder of videos right here. We will create a new folder which is called stop watch. Okay, and then we can go inside this folder and we will create here a new folder and let's call it for explanation. And then we will go inside this folder or just drag it inside the Visual Studio Code. Okay, that's good. And then we will create a new file here and call it what's wrong? Yeah. Target elements. Dot HTML of course. HTML. Okay, and the first thing we will build here is the HTML part. Let's open this file in the Firefox or any browser we are using. Okay. Let's type here HTML5. And then right here, let's type the CSS, uh, sorry, the HTML code. So we are gonna type here dev with class of class. And then inside it, we can just type I am the query selector for class. And then we can make here for the id, id, query. And inside it, we can copy this one and paste it here. And for the last one, we can make for the id of id and the get element i id. Don't focus on this HTML uh words right here we're just making it for the javascript and then uh, we can go here to type javascript code we have two ways to do that we can just type here script and then the javascript code will be coded inside or we can make an another way we can go here and create a new file this file will be called anything.js like script the most common name is script so we can type script.js this is the javascript file and then we can go inside the html file and make here script and here source script.js and everything we will type here will be go will go inside the html file but we can just delete this right now and use this one which we can type inside the HTML file. Okay, so the first thing we can do here is to know how we can target the class to target anything inside this document because this is an HTML5 document. So we will type document. Let's first reload this page. We got it in here. And then we will type query selector because here I'm, I am querying and I will select for this query. So I am doing a query and the query is to select something inside this HTML file, which is inside this document. And then we will open a bracket. For this bracket here, we need to separate between the class and the ID, right? In the CSS, we use the dot for the class and the hash for the ID, the same as the JavaScript. We will use a dot for the class and the hash for the id so we can just type dot here and then the class now we targeted we targeted the class which is called class right here which is this one but we need to make sure that we already targeted it let's try to do something here 
let's try to change the HTML, the inner text of this class using the JavaScript. To do that, we will make dot here. We can make inner HTML, but I prefer always the text content. And then I'm show you, I'm gonna show you why in the stopwatch project. I will show you the difference between the HTML and the inner HTML and the text content. And we will make equal. To type HTML inside or text or anything inside this one to be replaced here, we will make two double quotations. And inside the two double quotations, we will type the content. So we can just type here or we can copy this one and make it work. Okay, let's try to, ref to refresh the page. Well, it works and it's amazing. Let's now try for the ID. For the ID right here, let's do it again. Document because I will choose something inside this document HTML. And query selector, I want to make a query and the query I want to make is to select something inside the document. And up in the bracket, then we can make for the ID, uh, sorry, the quotation first, the single quotation, and then for the ID, we will use the hash as I told you. ID query, and then we can use any HTML or text content. But as I told you, I prefer text content. Text content equal. We can type this one now. Sorry, we can copy this one and paste it here. For ID here and ID works. And now let's try to refresh the page. Well, it works. Then the last one for the document required selector is to try to make to, to select the ID, but in a different way. We can make here a document because I want to make a query inside the document. But instead of typing query selector, we can make get element by the ID. So I will get the element from this document by the ID name. Get element by ID. So the trick here. Do you think we need to type here the hash or not? We already make we already made here get element by ID. So I don't need to specify whether it's ID or class. So we can just type here the get uh, sorry ID. So here I am choosing this one. Dot text content. And let's make it equal. Let's type here this one and add words. Reload the page. Well, it works. Now we are done from making the basic one. Let's try to do this with the variables. And now. Well, sorry. The first thing we need to know here, what is a variable? Let's say that I will make this one for several operations. So I will use this code line for five or six operations in the JavaScript. So, do I need to type this one? Do I need to code all of this line each time I use it? No, we don't need. We can make here var, which is which is stands for the variable. And then we we need to give this variable a name to call it when we need it. Let's call it a class variable. Okay. So after this one, we will make equal. So this is the variable and this is the name. Well, let's make it equal. And then we can copy this one. Document that requires a lecture, the class and text content. And then this is good. And then we don't need this one because it can be used for several operations. So we don't need to limit this one by text content. Okay, so we can go here and make class variable and now we can make dot text content so what did i do here what i did here is just i recalled or i recall this function which is this variable i recall this variable which is equal to this one 
and I type it here. What happened here is I put this thing here. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. And then we can make here the the, the class VAR works. Let's test it. Yeah, it works. And then let's try to make it for the ID. For the ID pack, this is a challenge. I want you to pause the video and try to do it for the ID yourself. Okay, so let's do it together. I hope you did it right. We can make here a variable. Let's call this variable something like the ID query var. And then we can make here document dot query selector because I want to make a query which is selecting something inside this document. And here this could be ID query. And then we can call or recall this variable right here id query variable and let's make it text content soon we will know how we can change the css and more with the variables document uh, sorry we don't need the document here and here we can make the id query variable works let's reload the page well it works now let's try it for the last one which is get element by the id we can make here variable let's make it uh, id variable and let's make it equal document dot get element by id and this one will be id and then we can make here the uh, Yes, the ID variable equal to document. No, sorry, ID dot inner HTML or text content. Let's make it text content and make it equal ID variable works. Okay, so this is good. Now we are done from the choosing or targeting the elements inside the HTML file by JavaScript and also the variables. In the next video, we will learn more with JavaScript. Good luck and see you in the next video. Welcome to the second video in the stopwatch project. In this video, we will learn how we can add event listener inside the JavaScript. As an example here, add event listener, we can give a function of click. When I click on something, I want something to happen. When I hover on something and more, like here, if I click on change class text, this will change. The same for the ID in the ID too. Let's learn how we can do that together. We will create a new file here and let's call it a new file. Add event listener dot html. And inside here, we don't need to make here a new code. We can just copy this one and make it inside here good and then what we need here we can delete this javascript because we need to make it again together now what we can do here as first we need to get buttons right so let's make the first button here and let's get this button the button with class let's get this class here the button class and then inside this one we can just type here change class text okay that's good let's say this one here reload and let's open this file in the uh, Firefox or any browser we are using yeah right here okay that's good and now let's add it for the ID query. So we can make here Putin and give it a class of uh, Putin ID query. And inside it, we can make change 
ID 1 text and let's add for the last one we can add here Putin uh, sorry not bold it's Putin Putin and it's closure let's give it the class of the Putin ID okay that's good and then inside it here we can type change the ID to text let's reload the page okay that's good and now we will type a JavaScript in this video let's try to type this JavaScript inside a JavaScript file so we don't need this one let's create a script file here script dot js okay now we need to connect between this uh, this js file and the html so we can make here script with source and script dot js so everything we will type here will be coded here again but hidden but it would work with the html file so let's go here and type the first thing we need to know here or we need to do is to give variables so let's give the variable for variable query selector class and let's make it equal document dot query selector and we will use the i is the class of the class and now let's make a variable for the class we can also make variable for classes of course so let's make var and let's give it a name of putum class putum class and let's make it equal document dot query selector and inside it we will type the the class of this putum which was the putum class so we can just copy this one and paste it here okay this is good and what we can do after this one is to add putin class now we need to have something here we need to make here when i click on it i want a function to be happened this will be done by adding add event listener and here we will type here what function i want to like something like the click I want to click or hover or mouse over or anything like that I want the click and what I want to happen when I click on this one what I want to happen is a function so I want function to happen and this will this function will be changing the text content of the class so this will be a function and we will type parameters and will be empty very soon we will learn how we can make it something inside like event and then we will open these brackets and then let's uh, say again what i did here put in the put in class which is document that requires a lecture the put in and then add event listener so add event listener will hold two things the click so I click on the button yeah this is the first parameter is true so this state is true what I want to happen else or after the click is a function and the function that I want to happen is changing the text content of this uh, of the something that I will type inside and the thing that we will type inside is this variable so we can make here query selector class dot text content and what will be inside here works now yeah it works let's say again what I did here the add event listener so we have here two parameters which is the click and the function the first one needs to be true and then it will move to the second one so let's reload the page the first one here is still false because we didn't click but when we click this will be true 
and then it will move to the function. Now, yeah, the first statement is true, so I moved to the second function or the second parameters, which is the function of making this one. Okay, this is good. Now, let's try to make it for the query selector ID. We can here copy this one. Copy and paste. Let's make this one ID. And query selector will be for the ID query. And let's make here the variable for the pudden. We can copy here and paste put in id or let's make it id query query and here let's copy the class of this one copy and paste it here now pause the video and try to do this add event listener yourself what I want you to do here is to add event listener of click and uh, change the content of this where where yes change the content of this choir selector ID by anything you want pull the video and try to do well now let me hear the prun ID query and make it add event listener and here I won't click and then we need a function a function so if the first statement is true I want you to move to the second parameter which is a function up at the bracket and here I want to change the text content of the ID query so we can make here query selector ID and here it will be text content equal to words let's reload the page right here the first one and uh, the second one works and the first one works now this is the time to make for the last one which is for the get element by id now we can make here for this part we can make variable and let's call it get element pi id and we will make it equal to document dot get element pi id and this one will be for the id and let's make a variable for the pudding also for the pudding we can make pudding id and let's make it equal to document dot query selector which was I don't really remember we can copy it from here and paste it here but this will be dot right here because we are choosing class and then we want to make here put an ID dot add event listener and then I won't click and then right here we can make four function leave the parameters empty soon we will learn how we can do that in the uh, in the to do list to do list project in this project we will learn how we can fill these parameters okay so here we need to make you get element by id dot text content to be equal to works let's try it now the first one works the second one works and the last one works so now this is good now we are done from this video which is add event listener in the description of the video you will find a website that shows you everything you can type instead of click like hover and all of that good luck and see you in the next video right now we will know how we can add content in the JavaScript. Like here, for example, when I click on add hello, so it will add the second one, the third one, and the fourth one until infinity. 
we will know how we can do that and in the next video we will know how we can add interval because it will be used in the stopwatch project like here but yes right here it will uh, count each second let's refresh this page to avoid making the laptop hot okay so here let's type this source code right here let's make here html5 okay we need to get inside this body and inside this body here let's make button this button will add the hello for this uh, hello text we can give here a class let's give it to add hello inside it we can type add hello and then we will type here dev with class of hello text and inside it we can just type hello okay so this is good now we will type a javascript code we can go down here and type script now i wanted to try to post this video and do here a variable for this one and this one and add event listener full click and leave the function empty because we will try the function together okay i hope you did it good what we can do here is make a variable for the pudding let's make it add hello and let's make it to be equal to document dot query selector and we will choose this one so we can just copy it from here and paste it here and then let's make for the hello text we can copy this one and let's make this text hello let's copy this class and paste it here okay that's good and now what we can do is to add a function for the event listener we can make add hello dot add event listener which is equal to uh, sorry not equal the click and i want a function empty parameters and equal okay so this is good now what we want to do here is to add hello to the word but let's reload the page so here we got this one it does it work right now so we can go here and make add sorry the text hello because this is the one we want to change dot text content equal we need to give here something to the code that tell you i will add hello each time i click on this button so we can add something like text hello dot text count it looks like creepy right plus hello we can leave a space here okay so now it works but we need to think what happened here what happened here did something like the y y the first state in this will be sorry this to be y plus one will be equal to the y the previous state plus hello let's give a space here so let's think about it here the first state here is hello which is this one I want when I click on this function the new state which is y plus 1 will be equal to the y previous state plus hello so when I click here I got two hellos now this is the initial state which is the present state I want here the next state which is uh, when I click on this one the next state will be equal the present state plus hello when I click here again it works I hope this is clear to you let's say it again so I want here let's explain it on this one this will be the next state 
and I want the next state to be equal to the present state plus hello. When I click here, it works. I hope this is clear to you and this is for the adding content. Okay, and now let's make it for the interval. Let's add a button here, which when I click on it, the interval will start. The class of start interval. And the content here will be for start interval. And then we can make here def with class of seconds because the content of this class will be changed when I click on this button because we will type the interval in this class. Okay, so here we need to set a variables. The first variable that we will set is variable s. And we don't need to type here equal to something. We can set this later. And this will be posted here when I click on this button because this will be the interval. Okay, so then we can make variable counter. And this will be the interval. This will be the one which is posted. And this will take the function of the interval. Okay, so then we can make here the uh, document dot query selector no we don't need document query selector because we get the button here in the variable so we can add here the we didn't set a variable for the button yeah and also for the seconds so let's make here the variable start interval and this that second one will be and this will be equal to document dot query selector which is for this button so we can just copy this one right here and paste it here and then we can copy this one var seconds copy this class and paste it here Okay, so this is good. Now, we will make add event listener for the start interval. So start interval dot add event listener. The click the function. And then we will type something here that I want to start the interval then, right? So we will set the counter there's a function which is called set, set interval and this would be the one that set interval i want to set interval and the function that i want to be set it which is we will call it something like run seconds so this function i want it to be run and I want it to run each 1000 milliseconds. So, what happened here? I here, I made an interval, which is this variable, and I made it equal to set interval, that I will play the function or run the function several times. And I want the function to run each 100 seconds, uh, 100 milliseconds. That's what the code means. And then, we will make here a function for this one function which is the uh, this one we can just copy it to avoid making mistakes in typing and leave the parameters empty and open the bracket and here we will make document dot query selector which is the uh, Oh, we have a variable here, I'm sorry. The where, 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 the seconds. Yeah, the seconds. Dot text content to be equal to S plus one. And then we will make here S equal to S plus one. And then here, this is the next state. This is the present state in 
this will be the number that will be added. So, if we are adding number, we don't need to add here quotations. But, if we adding text, we need to type the quotations. But, uh, the variable of s doesn't get its uh, equal right now. So, we can make here equal to zero. Okay, and then that's what happened right here. So what we can do after this part is run here. I hope everything here is clear to you and then we can start the interval and I hope we have no problem. Okay, it works. Yeah, and that's good. But we get a problem here. Let's try to click on this one for several times. It will run like crazy, right? So we need to get a function here. If it is already set, do not touch it. But if it's not set, touch it, right? So we can make here something like if function. So if the statement is true, go inside. And if that statement is not true, don't go inside. We can make if. And soon we will learn about if and else and more. If. And then right here, there is this mark which is not this in the source code is equal to not which is not counter so i'm gonna tell you something the counter if something is set like i uh, let's reload the page i clicked on this one so this turned it to true which is in the code is equal to one but i didn't i didn't click on it yet so it's equal to false which is zero and this code means here if it's not true if counter is not true so this is the not and it's the counter which is the true state which which is not counter which means the counter is not equal true so here i will set a function and cut this one and make it equal to here and now let's say the code again the start interval at event listener click and function that's easy in here if not counter which means the counter is not set or not true i want this to happen i will set it to true but if it's not true uh, sorry if it's true do not touch it and do not go inside here uh something like uh, neglect this one and go to this one if the counter is true so let's go here and now let's try to do it let's click several times now nothing change, nothing changes right here and this is the trick of the set interval now i must show, i'm gonna tell you something right here what we can do here we have here s equal s plus one instead of typing s equal s plus one we can just type here s plus plus which is equivalent to s equal s plus one let's try it okay okay so this is good and it works good and when i click several times nothing changes and this is about the set interval because we will use it for the hour inside the uh, stopwatch project in the next video we will learn more about the basics of the javascript good luck and see you there okay and now in this video we will learn about return which is a function that we will use in the stopwatch project so the first thing we can do here we can go after this one and let's add something here like uh, the hello text right here yeah let's make it hello text and then we can go deeper right here and let's give here the return function so we can give a function here and call it function of try return okay that we will type here i want when i call a function something to happen so I think we don't need all of that. So let's try to delete it and soon we will use it. Okay, so we can make here return. I want to return something, which is the testing. 
return okay so let's try to g refresh the page nothing happened right because here we didn't say something to change it in the text content of course yes so we can do here text hello and make it to be equal to a uh, sorry dot text content text content so i want to change the text content for the text content for the advantages of the text content over the in an html we can call or recall the function inside the text content but in the inner html we cannot do that that's why i prefer the text content we can make here try return and now we recall the function to happen inside here the text content of the uh, uh, the, the text hello I want to recall this function which is getting everything inside the function of try return which can be typed inside the text content of this one and now let's try refresh the page it works right but you might say that this is the only thing inside the function so naturally or something like it will he already typed inside because this is the only thing inside this function i'm going to tell you something right here we can go here and copy all of that from here to here okay copy it it's easy right and paste it here okay so now let's reload the page it works because this is the only thing that i want to return what what i type inside the return is the only thing will be typed inside the text content when i recall the function and i hope this is clear to you now that's all that that's all what we need to do before we start the stopwatch project from the next video we will start coding the stopwatch project so good luck and i hope you have fun with the project Thank you.